Friday the 13th. I'd been hit with a subpoena to testify before the grand jury in the Shannon kill. And a traffic accident on the highway had made me 20 minutes late. The last thing I needed right now was to be cited for contempt of court. And your husband, Robert Shannon, was appointed by the governor of the state of California as special prosecutor to investigate any connection between politicians and what is loosely termed the mob here in Los Angeles. That is so. Now, Mrs. Shannon, I know this may be painful for you, but I want you to tell the grand jury in your own words about the events which led up to your husband's death. The Shannon case was the hottest thing Lieutenant McGee had handled in 20 years. The governor's special investigator had been killed right under his nose. The newspapers were screaming, the mob rules City Hall. And now the cockroaches were starting to crawl out of the woodwork. You say your husband received death threats. Who threatened your husband's life, Mrs. Shannon? I don't know. There were telephone calls in the middle of the night. If he did not stop the investigation, he would be killed. Would you please tell the grand jury what you did? I talked to Lieutenant McGee. And he said... Oh, thank you, Mrs. Shannon. Lieutenant McGee will tell us what he said. Call Lieutenant McGee. Where the hell have you been, Marlowe? Mrs. Shannon's already been on the stand. Sorry about it. I don't want to hear about it. You're late. And you're lucky the DA didn't ask you to testify first. Lieutenant! I'm coming. That can be contempt of court. Something else. Uh, is there Mr. Marlowe here? Would you state your name and occupation, please? Detective Lieutenant Violet, um, Victor McGee. On August 4th, did you receive a visit from Mrs. Shannon? Yes, sir, I did. Can you please tell the grand jury what was said at that meeting? Well, I told Mrs. Shannon that the police department couldn't put a guard on her husband unless he himself asked for it. This he refused to do. So I advised her to contact a private investigator. And what was his name? Philip Morrow. Thank you, Lieutenant. Call Philip Marlowe to the stand, please. Philip Marlowe? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Take the stand. <coughs> Would you state your name and occupation, please? Philip Marlowe, private investigator. License 137596. Did Mrs. Robert Shannon come to your office in Hollywood on August the 5th? She did. And what passed between you at that meeting? She asked me to guard her husband's life, but she didn't want him to know about it. We agreed on a fee, and I accepted the job. Well, how did you go about it? Every morning at 8.30, I followed him here to his office at County Hall, followed him to lunch, and then back home again in the evening. Well, how long did this continue? Three days. On August 9th, he broke his routine. Now, Mr. Marlowe, please tell the grand jury exactly what happened on that day. Instead of driving into town, he drove west on Sunset Boulevard to the Bristol Circle in Brentwood and turned on to North Rockingham Road. Well, that's North Rockingham Road in Brentwood. Oh, so what happened next? Outside number 521, he slowed down, turned into the driveway. Did Mr. Shannon go inside the house? I don't know. I couldn't see. There were high hedges, so... Uh... I drove a few yards past the house and stopped so I could keep an eye on the entrance in the rearview mirror. And how long did you remain there, observing the entrance to the driveway? Almost an hour. And then I got that one minute to midnight feeling, so I left my car and walked over to the driveway. And what did you see in the driveway of 521 North Rockingham Road? Nothing. Shannon's car was gone. But if he had driven away, I would have spotted him. Was there any way out around the back? No, sir, not for a car. Well, where did you imagine the car had vanished to? Well, there was a garage. But it was padlocked. I stepped over to it to see if I could get a look inside, but I didn't get the chance. Looking for something? Shannon. Huh? Robert Shannon, where is he? Visitor, Manny. Keller says he's looking for somebody named Shannon. Who's Shannon? Yeah, who's Shannon? I was supposed to meet him here. 521 North Rockingham. There's a South Rockingham. Maybe that's the place. Yeah, South Rockingham. 
That's the place. You have a wrong address. Definitely a wrong address. You know something? You could be right. Believe it, pal. Yeah, pal. Believe it. I think I've seen him somewhere before. Who is he, Manny? I don't know. An hour later, I talked to Mrs. Shannon. She said before her husband had left that morning that he had received a phone call. He was excited because he thought he was on the verge of a breakthrough. He had arranged to meet someone at 521 North Rockingham Road. Yes, did, uh, did she say who? No, sir. And did you take any further action? I asked Lieutenant McGee to arrange for a search warrant, but by the time he'd arrived there, the garage was empty and the car was gone. Uh, was the house itself occupied? No. The house had been empty for weeks. Nobody lived there. And Robert Shannon's body was found later that same evening in his own car at the foot of a ravine in Topanga Canyon. Now, Mr. Marlowe, please think carefully before you answer this question. Can you tell the grand jury the names of the men you spoke to at 521 North Rockingham Road? Only one of them. The guy with the eye patch was Manny Tynan. Thank you, Mr. Marlowe. I think this is a good time to adjourn for the weekend. Mr. Marlowe, you'll present yourself here Monday at 10 a.m. to resume giving evidence. The grand jury is adjourned. Yes. So, did you tell them the whole truth they hope you got? If there's any justice. Thank you, Mr. Marlowe. Justice is about all I have left. I spotted Frank door outside the courtroom this morning. You know him? I know he's a picture you gotta see if you want to open up a gambling joint or a body house. He's more than that, Phil. A whole lot more. For two years now, Frank Dorr has been up to his dirty neck in this political thing. Shannon found that out. Shannon's dead. So that's who Manny one I was working for, Frank Dorr. <laughs> Not was, Phil. Is. You're getting a lot of heat from the governor's mansion in Sacramento to nail Manny Tynan for this kill so we can go after Dorr himself. And you're our only route. So you want me to stay clear of dead end alleys until Monday? You want a man to watch your back? Oh, I'll button up my overcoat when the wind blows free and try not to get a pain in my tum tum. McGee was always a worrier, but he'd set me thinking. Maybe I should take the weight off my feet for a couple of days. Poodle Springs might be a good place, Arrowhead maybe. Not that I was spooked, but there are times when courage is an overrated virtue. Couldn't make trouble and lead to all kinds of unsightly bruises. Get in here, Lou. Or need I ask? The door must have been unlocked. Maybe I had a key that fitted. Do you mind? Lou Harger was a drifter who had run a small-time gambling joint over on La Brea. Until the police shut him down for not paying his dues. Hey, what's wrong? Just thought I had a better lock. I'd like it if you parked it in the chair. <laughs> you still doing business? I'm still doing business. How about you? Listen. I got something for you. Not a hell of a lot, but there's car fare in it. I'm listening. Well, for two days now, I've had this itchy right palm. Luck. So I'm uh, 
Making a little play at Las Alindas tonight. Canale's joint. I'd like a guy with a rod to cover my blind sign. What kind of play? Crap table. Mm. What else are you going to have in your right hand, Lou, besides an itch? Hey, you don't think I'd palm a shaver, do you? Come on, Phil, you've known me a long time. That's why I'm worried. On my mother's life, this is a straight play. Okay, let's say I buy your cockamamie story and believe that everything is aces, but Canales doesn't. Gets nasty. That's why I want a guy with a rod. And I've taken Sally Glenn with me for insurance. Oh? A tall redhead. She used to be a model. She's nice people in any kind of a spot. I might as well level with you, Lou. I don't care too much for bodyguarding, especially since I just lost a client. So how come you picked on me anyway? I thought we was friends. Seems I was wrong. See you around. Ah, oh, hell. Pick up my drinks, tab, and pay for the gas. Thanks, Keed. I'll be there at nine. And don't pay any more attention to me than you have to. Seven, you got a chance to stick, but I pay evens on Jimmy Hicks. That's the way. That's the way. Get aboard, boys. Speculate and accumulate. No bite to watch them dice, so shake them out and don't think twice. Come on, dice. Do you know what you're doing? I know what I'm doing. Either two or six or eight, even money, ten or four. I later take it right or wrong, I go along. And the dice read eight. Oh! That citizen's hotter than a Turkish bat. He's playing with fistfuls now, not even counting it. You don't play? Not on Fridays. I had some trouble on a Friday once. If you like that straight over, I smooth it out for you. What with? You got a wood rasp handy? <laughs> 25 G's. Five G's. Here's your hat. My, my. Isn't that something? Astonishing. I'll be back in a minute, Lou. I'm just going to go to the little girl's room. I wouldn't take too long, Miss Glenn. Don't worry. I'll be right back. What are you driving? Blue Ford. Dark blue. California plates. RTM 440. Where's it parked? Enter the driveway inside the gates. All right. You move on out. I'll cover your back. must have moved pretty fast. He wasn't on the driveway. I'd been just 10 yards behind him, and now he was gone. Maybe he'd cut out across the grass, making straight for his car, but why would he do that when Sally Glenn was still inside? This felt like trouble. He stood a gorilla in a hat. His size didn't worry me, but the 45 did. He seemed kind of familiar. It was cold, and somebody was playing billiards inside my head. Soft bruise behind a left ear. No bleeding. But for some reason, I'd been moved. The long 38 was gone. Nothing else, and that worried me. Friday the 13th had one more hour to run, and I needed a shot of mother's milk to help me see it through. Losing track of clients was getting to be a habit. I 
down through the hills and back toward town. Past dead-looking storefronts, one gas station with a night bell, two cats, and a drunk. There was one bar open, and it had my name on it. It also had Lou Harger's car out front. Dark blue Ford RTM 440. Tuxedo with a redhead. They show. Nobody's been here for an hour. Except him. That bus outside, is it yours? The Ford? My brother's. Your brother's a friend of mine. Maybe I should buy you a drink. This doesn't have to be trouble. What's the beef? The guy who owns that heap out there doesn't have a brother. Sit down. I, uh... I didn't steal it. If you had, you wouldn't be sitting in a bar with a hot car outside. Listen, I could lose my job over this. I'm a hack driver, see? I don't want no trouble. Just tell it. Okay. I'm on my way home. When this Ford pulls up alongside me to red. Who's in it? Uh, this guy in a Judy. Tall redhead, guy's about 30 in a tuxedo. Yeah, that's him. The guy offers me this hundred if I let him drive my hack into town. I'm taking his Ford to the Hotel Carillon in Hollywood for him. My cab will be parked there, outside the hotel. That's where, uh, the guy's taking this Judy. What's his story? This, uh, redhead. She's somebody's wife. The husband's tailing him. I guess you're him, huh? So you know I'm leveling. I'm nobody's husband. I'm a P.I. Show me your cards. Yeah. Tom Snade, Green Top Cab Company. Your hack number is 469. Well, let's go get it. I'll tell you into town. Listen, I don't want no trouble, mister. So earn your hundred. It was the kind of stunt a guy like Lou Harger might dream up to make sure nobody knew where he was. Not even me. And with 25 G's in his pocket, he might not give a damn who got hurt. It was my cab. Should he leave it right here in front of the hotel? I could get... Letting someone else drive my cab, I could lose my hack license. I got a wife and kid. Yeah, all right. You wait here. You got a Mr. Harger registered here? Harger? Not in. You been back this evening? Not since he left. About, about eight. Put my card in his box, will you? Sure. Thanks. Nobody home. Well, what am I going to do? Stick around for a while. If it doesn't show up, report your hack stolen. Well, how am I supposed to get home? Call a cab. I called the hotel twice that night. No, Mr. Harger hadn't shown yet. So I went to the office early and tried to get a line on the redhead, Sally Glenn. I called model agencies, the Screen Extras Guild. Even called a friend in the L.A. Vice Squad, Sally Glenn. No dice. Probably wasn't a square moniker anyway. No. By 9.15, I was running out of ideas. Then I started to figure it another way. 
Maybe Harger wasn't in trouble at all. Maybe the guy with the problem was sitting right here in my chair. McGee, Violet Marlowe. You know a dice player named Lou Harger? Little guy thinks he's a big shot? Yeah, he's a moron. What about him? 25 G's? You were bodyguarding him. How come? I got sapped outside the casino and somebody lifted my 38. Harger switched his Ford for a cab, gave the hacky a C note, and hadn't shown since. Why are you telling me all this? I thought you might do me a favor. You want me to send out a APB on the cab, huh? What's the damn number? Green Top 469. Thanks, Violet, so I'll see you in court. Good morning. Lou said if ever I got caught in the rain, you'd be the man to see. Well, it's raining hard where I am, Mr. Marlowe. Come on in and tell me about it. Lou's money. He told me to give it to you for safekeeping. Where is he? Keeping his head down till the heat's off. What heat? Lou played with loaded dice last night. Oh, you don't say. They found out. Now they want his head on a platter. Who's they? Canalis. Guy who owns a casino. Yeah. So when did Lou give you this money? Last night, right after we got back. Then he drove off alone in his car. Yeah. He wouldn't tell me where he was going, said it was better that way. Then nobody... Then nobody could sweat it out of me. They can try. I know. I haven't been back to my apartment yet. I'm too scared. You live alone? Yes. I just don't know what to do. Maybe uh, I could put you up in my place for a couple of days. I'd just be a nuisance. Well, it might be nice to hear somebody's voice in my apartment besides my own. I think that's one of the saddest things I've ever heard. Well, let's go buy you a toothbrush. Lou was right about you. You're a hell of a guy. I know. Heart as big as an olive pit. Shangri-La. I can tell you're a bachelor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Well, uh, kitchen in there, bedroom through that door. I'll flop in here. There you see, I'm being a nuisance already. Well, we can make any other arrangement you might like. Excuse me. Oh, that hack you called me about. Auto theft found it this morning at the airport with Lou Harger's body in it. Thanks, Violet. I'll be in touch. Hey, where are you going? If the phone rings. Don't answer it. Oh, and uh, don't move the black knife. How do you do it, Phil? You almost arrived before he did. Do you know him? Well, maybe I can ID him for you. Save me a lot of time if you could. All I've got so far is the wallet and stuff. You want to take a look? Yeah. What's your interest? In Harger. Used to be a client of mine. Oh, sorry to hear that, Phil. You got the slug that killed him? In the office for ballistics on Monday.
About him? You want to give me the formal ID? It's harder. Is he a friend of yours? Sam. How long has he been dead? About 12 hours. Straight through the heart, point blank. Potter burns came through his shirt. Oh, they ate to five, you dug a long 38 out of him. How'd you know that? Just guessing. Slugs in the office if you want to see it. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Want a beer? some coffee then no thanks charlie got a date don't you want to see that slug i've probably seen it already open up sally it's me Nobody here but us reception committee. What's the angle? Business. Why the snatch? I told you. Business. The big boy wants to see you. Canales? <laughs> Canales? <laughs> you two bit nothing. I said the big boy. And <laughs> Hey, shut up! I knew the laughing gorilla from that dead 521 North Rockingham with one-eyed Manny Tynan. If it was him outside the casino last night, I had a pretty good idea who Big Boy was. But something told me there wouldn't be too much laughing on the inside. Thank you, Mr. Povey. Take a seat, Mr. Marlowe. Beautiful up here, isn't it? Fresh air, solitude. Here, a man can think. Very impressive. Do all your guests arrive this way? It was simpler than arguing. You know who I am? Saw you outside the grand jury hearing yesterday. What's my name? <laughs> you got a sudden case of amnesia? I'm Frank Dorr, Mr. Marlowe, and we'll get along better if you leave the wisecracks in the back alleys you normally frequent. Perhaps you'd like to pour us a drink. Scotch whiskey for me. Yesterday, you identified Manny Tynan to the grand jury. It won't do, Mr. Marlowe. Shall I tell you why it won't do? Put you in the picture? No, thanks. If I'm not in the picture, I can't be framed. But you already are, Mr. Marlowe. And most convincingly. Lou Harger was sent to his redemption by a bullet from a long 38. Your long 38. <clears throat> so you see, you are in the picture. Maybe he got tired of life. Hit me on the head and shot himself. And maybe you killed him for his money. You do have his money, don't you? The money alone is not enough for a murder conviction, I grant you. But the money and your gun would send you to the steam bath. All right, Dor, you've laid the groundwork nicely. Now let's get off the dime. On Monday, you will retract your testimony against Manny Tynan. By pleading congenital confusion? You're intelligent enough to decide how, Mr. Marlowe. Your gun will be returned to you, and as a reward, you may keep the $25,000. If, however, you decide otherwise... My 38 finds its way to the DA's office. Exactly. <laughs> Our discussion is at an end, I think. 
No dice. You're forgetting who Tynan killed. The governor's special investigator. Sacramento wants a star witness kept clean. The DA will throw out this bum rap in an hour. You just talked your life away. Snap his neck. Tell him, Dorian. The rent. Look how he says. All right, back off. Slow and easy. Tell him you All right, up against the wall. Move. Good breaks. Guess I was pretty lucky, huh? Hey, wait a minute! You don't mind if I come along with you, do you? Just a couple of miles. I'll pay for the gas. And me, we're going on to the next intersection, okay? So what were you doing back there anyway? Uh, picking flowers. I'm a florist. With a gun? Hey, I know what you are. You're a G-man, right? Yeah, I saw this movie once. A guy just like you, he runs into this bar this and starts going fast, yeah. everybody. Ah, a G-man, yeah. His name was Adam. Adam something. What's your name? Violence. Violence? Violence McGee. It was worse for my old man. His name is Hyacinth. We're all florists. Hey, you want to keep your eye on the road here? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Gee, man. Oh, wow. You know something, Dreamboat? This is crazy. <laughs> Fun, though, huh? Oh, yeah. Well? I don't get it. He just disappeared. Forget it. Concentrate on the girl. I want Marlowe in court on Monday broken. Don't worry. He will be. Get out. Close the door. This is Frank Dorr. May I speak to the senator, please? Good afternoon, sir. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Senator, relax. There will be no indictment on Monday. And nothing to link you or the mayor with us. <laughs> but uh, I am afraid it may cost a little more. As a bluff, mine was thinner than the gold on a weekend wedding ring. I didn't believe all that hooey I gave Dora about the murder rap not sticking. Thanks. Call any time. The first thing I had to do was get rid of all that money in my filing cabinet. I decided to mail the 25 G's to myself at the main L.A. post office, General Delivery. Pick it up Monday after the grand jury hearing. I wouldn't have to bother. Had a good week, huh, kid? Must have been a lot of wandering husbands you collected this week. <laughs> <laughs>
You got a paper for this bust, then? Don't get legal with me, Marlowe. You should say two Our Fathers and three Hail Marys. You're not in the slammer already. You told me you bodyguarded Harger last night. You told me that he had a big win, 25 Gs. You told me your 38 was lifted. But now Harger has a 38 slug in him, and you got the 25 Gs. If I'd killed Harger, but I've told you everything that ties me to it. Sure, I'll get out for you if your peace turns out. You don't love me anymore, Violence. I got a feeling I'm gonna love you all the way to death row. <laughs> Come on, Vilas, I've been framed. Doors got my 38. On Monday, I go onto the witness stand, retract in front of the grand jury, I get my piece back. If not, the DA gets my 38. Your story plays like pea soup, Phil. But I'm gonna better the odds for you. Let's go get that hacky while his memory's still fresh. Okay, let's go. Take that back to the station house. Listen, Murphy, I don't care who's sick, you sign in every time you come in. You understand me? That's your name on the paper. Are you the dispatcher? No, I'm a priest. Well, Father, I'm looking for one of your drivers. The name is Tom Snade. You know where he is? Suddenly, he's very popular. What's the beef? I asked you the question. Oh, well, <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Well, he works nights, so I guess he's at home. 1211 Renfrew Drive, about three blocks from here. You know Renfrew? I know Renfrew. Hmm. Uh, say, how many cabbies you got working here? I don't know, 90, 95. You know all their addresses? Huh? Well, you came up with snades pretty quick. And, uh... Why don't you say it's suddenly become very popular? A couple other guys were looking for him a while back. Hmm? I don't care if she's dying. You sign in. Uh, Use a hand. There's a hand and a pencil. Renfro Street! Step back! by the day, week, or hour. I guess there was a living in it. For a while. Come on, kid. Is there any brandy in the house, ma'am? Uh, no. Could you get him some coffee? Yeah. Now then, what's your name, son? Tom Snade. Did you ever see this man before? Last night. Tell me about it. He's a P.I. Tailing a restless wife for the husband. The John gave me a C-note to swap cars, so uh, you could shake this guy off the tail. Guy stole my cab, that's all I know. Did you see the doll? Mm. What's she look like? Tall, red head, a looker. Could you recognize her again? Sure. Why? 
Okay, Phil. Your story holds water. Who were those guys? Why'd they try to kill me? Because you can identify the redhead. And if she's nailed, she'll talk. You better lock him up. Why? To keep him safe. The arrest of the cabbie hit the evening papers. I figured the story would be on Frank Doerr's desk before the ink was dry. If the cabbie could identify Sally Glenn, Doerr would want her out of circulation post-haste. I counted on her panic and running to the cops for protection. And if Doerr couldn't find her, he'd come looking for me. can turn to. No one. Oh, God, they're going to kill me. You are a talented lady, Angel. If I was a movie critic, I'd give you a rave notice. Don't you understand? Tonight, someone tried to kill me. Who? Frank Dorr. There's this man called Poby. Why? Cough it up, sister, take your butt to the police. That's what they're paid for. No, please, you don't know what they're like. They're... All right. All right, I'll tell you. What I said before wasn't the truth. Some of it, but not all of it. They made me lie to you. Just how much of it was the truth? Give it to me straight from the top and maybe I'll help you. But stop playing little Bo Peep looking for a sheep. It all started when you testified against Manny Tynan. Go on. There was no big win at the casino. The whole thing was staged by Frank Dorr. Lou was given loaded dice to play with so he couldn't lose. And I was given you. I was forced to frame you for robbery with Lou's money to discredit you with the grand jury. Lou was going to testify against you. Huh. My friend, Lou Harder. But I never knew they were going to frame you for murder, Philip. So what was Harger afraid of? Why did he switch to the cab? To shake you. To make the story stick that you were after the money. Then Lou Harger gave you the win to give to me. Yes. And then he drove himself to the airport? No. Doors men caught up with him, shot him with your gun and dumped him there. He never had a chance. God, how I hate Frank Dorr. So why do you work for him? Once you work for door, you never get away. That's so people know who's handing out the favors. Door branded you. Frank wouldn't do a thing like that. Poby did it for him. Don't get too lonely on that couch.
Big boy's expecting me. If he wasn't, you'd be dead. More muscle in this town than a 50 cent steak. Clean? Make it short, Mr. Marlowe. I'm a busy man. You want the girl? I want my piece. I gave you the girl, you give me my gun. Short enough? When? Eight o'clock, my apartment. I hand you the girl. You hand me my 38 in person. You know, the whole alphabet phobia is just the letter D. Let me know when you get to M. I'll be waiting. Come along, Sally. All right. Just a short ride. Not far. Free sleep! Just give me the chance, Dora. Risk him yet? Save that pleasure for you. The 38 that pushed Lou Harger across in Mr. Frank Doris' possession. Embarrassing, huh, Frankie? Bone in the stairs needs a meat wagon. Use the pay phone. And take him with you. I'll catch up with you later. I'll do anything for you. Go anywhere with you if you want me. Sure. You don't even have to pack a bag. It's just a five-minute walk to the Wilcox Avenue police station. You and Frank Dora make a terrific team. What do you say? But you make too many mistakes. You knew it was my gun that killed Harger. How? Simple. You squeeze the trigger. Oh, come on, Phil. You've got it wrong. Yeah, at the casino, when you said you had to go to the powder room, Harger waited in his car, and you waited until I was sapped, and my gun was passed to you. But the one thing that nobody counted on was this. Lou Harger never had any intention of handing over that win to you, to me, or anybody else. That's why he switched to the cab. You had to shake me, but not for the reason you gave. He did it for this. Two airplane tickets to Mexico City. One for Lou Harger. And one for Mrs. Lou Harger. Oh, he was gonna live it up with you on that 25 G's, wasn't he? Only he never got any further than the airport because you drilled a hole in his heart with my 38. You wouldn't. 
Oh, yeah. Listen to me, Phil. Listen. Frank door is finished, but you and I, we've got a future. We... Is that what you told Lou Harger? Harker? But you're not in the same class. Mm. You wouldn't do this for a Harker. He hired me to protect his life. It didn't do him much good, but by God, I owe him. You've got door for that. Mm-mm. I've got Dora and Tynan for Shannon, and I have you for Harger. And what about last night, Phil, huh? What about last night? That was last night. The night before, you were the queen pin and the machine ticking over to push me into the gas chamber. Sally Glenn got off with life. If she behaves herself, she could be out in 10. The 25 Gs were turned over to the public administrator, and he allowed me a $200 fee plus $9.25 mileage. Sometimes I wonder what he did with the rest. Yesterday, a man named Candless disappeared at lunchtime. Next on Philip Marlowe, Private Eye. His body washed up on the beach at midnight. A big time lawyer takes a ride. No, no! That's shorter than he expected. You're not serious. Murder is. The clues point to revenge. Chico will kill you for this. Yes, very well move. But Marlowe isn't so sure. Parisi couldn't kill a time. Fine. You don't want to hear about a couple of hit men that just blew in from Reno. And when the train gets hot, he may just be the next victim of the deadly Nevada gas. The stakes are high. <laughs>